Um, oh yes, I do want to recognize. Thank you, thank you ben. I do want to recognize that we have a distinguished guest tonight, a former president of the Fairlawn Radio Club, Stan Sanders. Stan, you raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you for coming back and visiting us. All right, I'm going to pass this to you. Oh, yeah, go ahead. 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 Go
Uh, I'm sure everybody has heard about M1 MF. And if, if you're into contesting, it is an incredible, it's an amazing program. It's amazing what they, what the owner, the original developer charges for. Big fat goose egg, zero dollars. How many here have contested, contested a little bit? How many here have committed 25 Qs an hour? Good. I don't expect all of you to sign up for NRC. <laughs> if you make one point of the contest, you can be along to NRC. Uh, how many people have made 100 Qs an hour, 200 Qs an hour? So when, you're, when you're working at those rates, and I have had the chance to do so running stations uh, at K2AXs and some of the lower rates doing some special event stations from home, that's when you define N1MM is shiny. It is a logging. Sorry, is a contest logging program. If you want to use it to just keep track of the QSOs you made and your DXCC and stuff, nope, it's going to fall flat on its face. Doesn't track QSL cards, doesn't track your uh, progress towards DXCC or any of the awards. But if you want to run a contest, I'm not going to use any other program. So, <coughs> Those give you bean headings, so. Gives you bean headings. Okay. Okay. Quite a bit, yes. So let's start out with N1MM logger is dead. After over 10 years of development with Visual Basic 6, it was time for a new development environment. For those of you that are into software development, particularly on the Microsoft platform, Visual Basic 6 came out in, what, around 1986 or so? And it was Microsoft's own version of BASIC, and it was an unbelievable development environment. The things you could do with Visual BASIC in that development environment were unbelievable for the time. So that was 1986. This is what, 2016? So Microsoft reached the point that it no longer supports that environment. There was no guarantee that any Visual BASIC 6 program or Visual BASIC 6 in the development environment would produce an application that can run on the next generation of <coughs> Microsoft promised they would cut it out in Windows 8. They got forced to allow Visual Basic 6 applications to run on Windows 8. I think they will begrudgingly want run on Windows 10. No guarantee they'll make it to the next edition of Windows. So Tom Wagner and one of them himself <coughs> realized he needed to move on to the latest generation of Windows development environment. Visual Basic .NET 2008. It's not actually the latest version, but it's one that's promised for support for 20 or so years. Um, and he tends to use it for long-term support, at least until Visual Basic 2008. I had a chance to speak with Tom and some of the other members of his development team when they were first doing the work and having done some similar stuff. It was a lot of work to convert the program from VB6 to Visual Basic .NET 2008. <laughs> A lot of features in their language went away because they brought in new features and such. It's a real big pain. I can get onto a long diatribe about that if I have to support applications like that. So the N1MM plus team no longer supports the original version, so of N1MM. If you want to use it, you can still download it. It will still point you to where it's available, the last version. You can install it, it will run, but it's at your own risk. If there's a bug in the program or it doesn't support a contest you want to use, they're not going to be touching the program. So they moved on to N1MM Plus. Uh, officially, its name is N1MM Plus Free Contest Log. It is a superb piece of software. I'm an early adopter of it, somewhere around version one. Because so I needed a new logging program that would support a couple of contests that CT didn't support. I really wanted a digital voice here, and it was cheap. So I started looking around at what was available and such, and two caught my eye. Write Log, which I know a lot of people were using, and then one MM Plus. So Write Log was like $80 or $90, and then one MM was free at the time. I downloaded it, I installed it, I immediately fell in sync with how it was going, started using it. And it was like, oh my god, this is an unbelievable piece of software. It's working, it's smooth, it does everything. Yeah, people are complaining about it, but there are people looking for features that it did, hadn't implemented yet. But I could see that that's the direction it was heading. Uh, the software is professionally written by an amazing and responsive team. I've met several of the members. 
Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the key authors of the program is a member of FRC. He will release special beta versions of the program to the membership to, to test if they want to test it. And he, he's kind of like a choir guy, so I'm not going to tell his call sign, but I will say it's one of the call signs on the header when you fire up in one end. And if there's problems, and some real low-level problems, he can help figure them out and get them done. The program as a whole will give you a lot of opportunities to improve contesting skills. If you want to just do 25 cues an hour, it can still take you to doing 50 cues an hour and learning a whole bunch of little tricks by the features that it offers you. And it's really smooth. I took it upon myself, because I, I seem to have a way with computers, that for a number of contests I said to myself, I'm going to learn one new higher level feature of N1MM, and that's how it came up really good at. So I just added it, just kept saying, okay, I'm going to do this feature, I'm going to do this feature, I'm going to do this feature in this contest, and just kept adding it to my baby tricks. Okay. But the goal of N1MM Plus is capabilities. It can be a little bit daunting to set up. It can be can put guidance and get some explanations and get into the flow. It's not a necessarily difficult task. At least in this presentation, I won't be deep diving into too much stuff, but I can bring up, I have one mm already running on my laptop, and I can show you a whole bunch of different tricks about it. You can't break the program from poking around, left clicking, right clicking, <clears throat> looking at the manual and stuff, and poking at the program. It is, it is bullet, pretty much bulletproof. I shouldn't say that, I do software development for a living. There's always one more bug. Usually we found about 10 or 15 years ago. Okay, M1M Plus is free. It's updated regularly. Sometimes it has been updated in the middle of a contest if there's been a major bug found during the contest. That's kind of a risky thing, but I did take one of those updates, cured the problem, and continued on with the contest. There is an extensive manual. The band has mentioned he printed it out, went through like three packages of paper. Yeah, it's well over a thousand pages in wrote. It is maintained by people who know technical writing. Technical writing is a skill in its own thing. There's three or four people on the team that are technical writers. That's what they know how to do. That's what they love doing. They've taken it upon themselves to work with the development team and get the manual, keep the manual. The manual does tend to lag a little bit with the program when the developers are working a little bit faster. But they know, they put pointers in the thing when things have changed and they haven't yet updated the manual. Uh, there is no Macintosh or Linux version of M1MM. It's a pure Windows program. There have been people who have successfully used Windows emulators on those platforms to run M1MM. However, Tom and the team will, if you have a particular problem that really seems related to it running on, on a Macintosh or something through an emulator, they're not going to support you. They're focusing purely on the Windows environment and the Windows uh, application. Are there thoughts of that happening later on? No. No, they've got so much work invested in the program. When you see all that is there, you'll realize it would be a, almost probably a complete rewrite of the program. And then to maintain the two programs in parallel, <coughs> they probably would have to move to the job and have anything to go uh, in that direction. There's a thought. Then you got a little Java overhead of its own, right? Yeah. Um, so, how do we get in one M? Really, you just go to the, on the web, you'll find www.n1mm.com, it'll point you in the right direction. There's like a menu at the top, files, n1mm plus, full install. You'll have to get basically two parts to the program. The full install will be, it's the full also kind of sometimes referred to as the base install. Every now and then they will do a release of the complete package of the program, and they'll say, this is our base point. Anybody doing a brand new install, this is where we want you to start from. Two Tuesdays, they released an updated version. Okay, I updated that, my computer there last week. It's what, Friday now, there's already an update that I can download. Right, yeah. Okay, so you, after you get this installed, you don't even have to get it fully running, you can then download the latest update and install it. You only need the latest. They're always cumulative. So if there's been 15 updates since you installed the base thing and haven't followed any one of them, you can then download just that latest 15th version. You'll get the 14 previous ones all in one package. 
There may have been one or two exceptions to that over the years, but they, they make it quite clear that that's an exception. Uh, you may need to load a driver in also to handle a bit twiddling or power port and an LPT port for doing uh, CW keying and PTT. They are still able to support it natively within N1MM. I'm surprised with the way Windows is typed up access grade the hardware to protect the computer, to protect the computer against viruses and stuff. Um, but it's still doing perfect CW even in Windows 10. I was not expecting that. I should want a win here. This is an outboard USB device to do my CW key for me. I still can actually install it. Yes. Hey Mark, just a quick favor. Just for the video, can you step back so that your head is under the light? How's that? How's that? Now I can't see the screen. I can't see the screen. <laughs> The CW keying issue. What's it like if you're running the Flex 5000 or 1500? I have not run it with a 5000 or 1500, but if they have a, a CW jack input, all it's getting is switch closures. Okay. You're running it through a, um, a transistor buffer, and okay. that's all it's doing. So you don't want to have it trying to emulate a paddle or anything. It's just doing real fast. Somebody who's put a doing that on a key, on a okay. string key. So it's a keyboard? It, so it's so basically used for CW keyboard? Yes. Okay. And more. CW memory, yeah, yeah. automatic increment, unbelievable. So, so there's no, what's the latency like from keys to key? I can't type fast enough for it to come, for it going out of 30 words. It sends 50 words if I'm perfectly clear. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah from, 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 from key clip contact to to the first closure of back here, so where that. You can set that for later. <coughs> okay, so you have the ability to, if you, if you have a rig that needs a little more time, or you've got a sequence chain. Where I was going was, does it stack up with, there's, there's problems with those SDR platforms for CW, especially with the side time. So I just want to know if it's going to just. Yeah, if they can take a command in, I've only recently started playing with this on K3. I can give my K3 a string of characters for its internal key of descent. Mm -hmm. and, I have, and you can do that through M1MM. Does it generate its own site on this? M1MM? Yeah, but it sounds pretty crappy on the computer. I just listen to comes out of the room. Yeah, but, but will it generate site on my headset? Is that what you know? It's been so long. I think it would just be. The reason I'm asking is because the latency on. Um, the SDR sometimes can be a little high. Yes. So if you can bypass that by moving it back into the logging program and its accoutrements, you might be better off. So I'm liking this. Right. Or you can use like an external wind here, which has built in piezo speaker, and it gets the strength. Yeah, yeah. You can turn down side tone on the rig, turn up its side tone, you hear it there, and it does the key into the rig. Exactly. I've, I've turned off the audio processing on the feedback to uh, monitor mode in sideband on my K3, which you get the delays. Right. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to, hello, hello. Yeah, it throws me off. Exactly. Yeah, I turn that off in the rig. It would be nice to hear what it sounds like going out, but I don't want to start stuttering because I'm hearing things out of See, you're going to say good job. Okay, good. Okay, so installing M1MM plus FQ download. <clears throat> Do not use the run option when you connect you to the website. A lot of times it will offer you, you click on the file to download, it detects it to the exe. Do you want to run it from the website? No. no. Just, just save it to the PC and run it as an administrator on the PC. That will just clear up a whole bunch of problems, potential problems for installing. Uh, this has been a big change from a lot of what old timers used to be. <coughs> You used to be N1MM, put everything in the program files directory. Now, because of Windows security procedures, the program only is in the program files, and you have the data files set on the basically my documents. <laughs> it's actually a little bit, yes, it makes it easier to get to the stuff. Is that location configurable? Yeah, as long as it's in your my documents, I'm sure. Yeah, that's a good question. I haven't played with that. I just uses the full. I think you can probably change it, but it comes up as in when I'm in Logger Plus is the directory name underneath my documents. Uh, I, I, have have I never use my documents. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of halfway myself in doing stuff. I do all my stuff. I put all my stuff on a separate drive. You don't have to access those files manually. Yes, some of them you do. Like when you want to yeah. you generate the Cabrillo to send up for a lock, for a contest. Config yeah, files, there. Too, I would assume. Config files, wave recordings. That's a good question. I actually should have a note here to say. I don't, I don't know. I just went through the default. I was good with it. Makes it really easy to find. Uh, and it's always it's in the same place. And I don't have to dive all the way down to program files and one MN plus and then go find separate directories. Everything is underneath this as the top one. Uh, this is a recent hint I just noticed on the website. Make a backup of the My Documents M1MM Plus and M1MM Logger Plus directory, including the subdirectories, on a regular basis. At some point, we'll be very glad you did. <laughs> yes, they might have, they do have occasional bugs, as good as the team is, or something else gets stopped on in there and you have a problem. So I recently just did that. I found it very nice to have Dropbox or some other cloud storage thing. Just save it up in the cloud because you can get a copy back you know, on any other computer and such. And I had a laptop, personal laptop of mine stolen on me. Fortunately, a lible, a lot of the stuff I had backed up there because that was one of the easier things to get back on the new laptop.